Hello and welcome to commentary of Lego Ninjago vs Bootleg Deco Bella and Bo. Now for those of you who pay attention to my channels and my other channel, my Geeko channel, where I do all the reviews now to you know get advert commissions and stuff, uh, I did a review on some Ninjago bootleg. The first one I did was Bella and that was like a piece of crap. Uh, it was really cheap but um, there's, a lot of, there's no quality control, it's missing plastic and the printing's all over the place and messed up. And then later, um, I found another one that was also really cheap, and I thought, well, okay, um, I didn't enjoy the other brand. Don't know why there's more than one brand doing bootlegs of Ninjago at the same time. So, okay, I picked it up, and then it was Deku, and the quality was so much better than Bella. I was, I was genuinely quite surprised. And then later, I did the one for Bo, which is also quite good, but not as good as Bella, although it do have that weird leg functiony thing. Because uh, the plastic is molded slightly differently, so you can bend the legs further than official Lego pieces, which you can argue as a good thing because um, sometimes it looks less natural uh, because it's missing plastic there, so sort of like a gap between the legs and the waist. But for animation purposes, having more movement is always quite good. So if you had official Ninjago Lego, like the same characters as the ball stuff, you can mix them together and then you know use them as sort of different camera tricks, so you can do more movement. Actually, in Hong Kong, I also saw uh, another brand, another bootleg brand of Ninjago Lego knockoff. So maybe next time I go back to Hong Kong, I'm going to see like 10 different brands doing the same sets and stuff. Who knows? kind of wish they would do other brands. Like, I know they can't do licensed brands because you can't copyright ninjas, which is why there are all these ninja brands. So they can get away with it, the bootlegs. So anyway, um, so so I did those reviews and I thought, oh, that would be cool to sort of animate bootlegs uh, with, with Lego. And uh, so I did a versus, decided to do a versus thing. And recently I've been quite upset with certain Lego qualities and the prices they're charging. Now, some people say inflation, yada yada yada, so they're priced about the same. Now, non-licensed sets, Lego is similar price to what it was before, but all the licensed stuff is way too expensive. Lord of the Rings, Star Wars sets. Now that's not necessarily Lego's fault, it's just like the respective company's fault, but the prices are way too high. For example, the nice uh, old, the old Republic Sith ship is way too expensive, Jabba's Palace is way too expensive, and most of all the Lord of the Rings sets are way too expensive. I'm not paying crap like money for that. And um, I want to mention this video is the Star Wars Planet sets, and they are so ridiculously priced. Twelve ninety nine for a minifigure, a mini kit set, which used to be four pounds ninety nine, and a planet. It, it's disgusting. Uh, it's just terrible. And the, the Ninjago stuff, um, the big sets are fine, but the small sets that come with the cards. Uh, the booster packs again they are rip off prices it's like lego watches watches are rip off uh, a lot of the other lego stuff is rip off so apart from main sets they're just so expensive it doesn't make any sense so here and of course chima is like the next one that's doing that and i can't help but feel chima is just an extension of being rip offs which is why i did this video and and the, my idea of this video is i i like lego Lego is one of the best companies out there in terms of business practices, but even them, they have dipped into uh, some sneaky tactics, uh, which is what this video is about. Like you can love something and still criticize it because because you love it. That's why you're criticizing it. You don't want it to go bad. Uh, one other disappointing thing is I got Ninja Turtles Lego set recently, and some of the white plastic is also not as white as it should be. It's semi replacements, and it's also not as white. It's weird. The right door. With the next left door, the both pieces put together, you see one piece is whiter than the other. It just doesn't make sense. They both should be the same white. And also, there was that deal with the Batman heads where the printed face was slightly misaligned. So when you put the bats, Batman's mask on, the eye sockets where the white is doesn't match up. The white paint is a lot thinner than what it used to be. So the DC superheroes Batman heads have a lighter paint, thinner paint than the Lego Batman sets from the first time around. And that that's that's not so good. Uh, it's really ironic watching that the history of Lego done in a Pixar animation style, where um, the guy who invented Legos sort of um, was angry with, with his son for trying to save money by having two layers of paint instead of three layers. Told him to get all the stock out and repaint them. 
And now Lego is painting stuff with really thin layers of paint. Oof. So there you go. I didn't really talk much about this video specifically, but sort of my ideas on what uh, I wanted to do with this video. Just just express some opinions and show that even though I'm, I'm being mad at Lego, I still love Lego. Um, and of course, if you want actual more details on the making of this, I have uploaded a preview video um, and a behind the scenes, some basic behind the scenes. If you want more details on how to make Lego films, check out my other making ofs. For example, my four part Silent Hill video series. Uh, behind the scenes that tells you a lot of details and cause um, all the other behind the scenes videos for Lego Batman vs. Alien for the Burgers. So thank you for watching this video and uh, take care and have a nice day. Check out those reviews in the links below. Thank you. Bye.